Now winter fishing can be very, very tricky at times because the fish aren't moving quite as much, they're certainly not eating as much, and it can be difficult to locate. So choice in venue is very, very important. Now I'm down here on a, on a lake just around the corner from the office. Um, I've never cast a line in here before, so I, I don't really know anything about it, but we did have a walk around, it was probably two weeks ago uh, on my lunch break, and I can see it's very, very shallow water, which is perfect for winter fishing. Uh, there's also a road that along that bank there, a road along that bank there, and a train line across there. Now, for whatever reason, the best waters I've fished in winter have always had a road alongside it or some kind of noise or some kind of vibration going into the lake. I, I don't know if that's just coincidence or what, but it's always been the case that if the lake's got a road near it, it fishes well. You know, there's Monk's Pit in Cambridgeshire, which is got awesome winter form. Farlow's down in um, Surrey, fishes really, really well in winter. That's got the M25 right next to it. And there's, there's, a, there's a couple more other waters dotted around the country. So in theory, this place should fish well in winter. I've got no idea if it does. I've never cast a line in here. I, I, I don't know what we've got to expect really, but it is quite weedy. That's the one thing going against it. So I'm down here today to try and find the fish. And what I intend on doing is fishing short sessions, which is completely different from what I've done over the last few years, because most of the waters I fish tend to be a good drive away from home. So it's, it's only worth doing a night or two nights um, in order to justify the 150 or 200 and something mile round trip. <clears throat> so I'm gonna try and hit this, try and stay mobile and keep walking around, trying to find something, fish for two or three hours in a swim. If nothing happens, wrap up and move on to the next swim. But I'm looking for line bites, I'm looking for subtle shows. I'll be climbing a few trees, especially now the sun's out, to see if I can see fish just milling around in the weed in the water and just keep moving and trying to catch something. I'm gonna go a little walk around, climb a few trees, got the Polaroids on, see if I can find a fish. And if I can find a fish, I've got a chance. Now, because that sun's gone in, and basically I'm looking for fish, I keep changing the colour of my Polaroids because these are great in low light conditions because they've got a sort of yellowy lens. Whereas previously I was wearing these with the blue lens. Now these blue lens ones are perfect for bright sunshine because they, they cut out a bit of the glare, uh, but you, you're able to see a little bit further with these. Whereas these in direct sunlight would be a bit too light. So hopefully as the sun goes in and out, I'll keep switching between these darkened blue glasses and these light glasses. And uh, that might be just enough for me to detect a, a little back just pushing through the weeds or just something out there to give me a starting point, which is vitally important this time of year. Well, I don't know this lake at all. The only other time I've ever seen it before is when we had a walk around when I was on my lunch break. And the only other person I know to fish it is the cameraman, Mark. Now, Mark tells me last winter, he dropped in here and had a couple of fish just out of this edge down here. So that's a, that's a, that's a starting point. You know, there's some dying pads just in the edge. And I can imagine fish just sort of hanging around and, and holding this sort of area. Now, back then it was different conditions because it was vastly flooded, but still, past captures, past winter captures is a good thing to look at to point you in the right direction of a uh, of hopefully a future winter capture because fish are going to have little areas where they like to hold so this could well be one of them so i'm going to spend a bit of time in this corner checking out these pads see if i can see a, one of the dead pads knock or just see if i can see a shadow moving through or just just something to indicate some fish life but like i say i haven't got a great deal of knowledge to go on that so those two captures from last winter is the only real thing i've got to go on so i'm gonna have five minutes down here and just see just see if i see something move if not, I'll go further up the lake there and check it out. I'm just a bit gutted this, uh, this sun's gone in now because that sun would have been perfect. Get up a few trees on the back of this wind. I should be able to see a fair distance out. I'm just hoping, and there's a bit of bright sky across there, I'm just hoping this sun comes back out again to give me a chance of uh, seeing down into the water and see if there's some fish kicking around. Right, well I think I found them. 
there's, there's one just turned there, there's two or three fish just milling around just under the surface. In fact, there's a big pale ghosty there just turned around, which is giving all his mates away. He's the one I saw first. So I stood here for five minutes and then just seeing a few little ripples and a few little dimples and I can still see that ghosty clear as day. I don't know if I can climb any trees around here, but there's, there's enough fish and they're moving as well. So this is where I'm going to start. I'm going to leg it back to the car now, grab the gear and then just flick out a couple of singles. But um, ghosties are very, very useful for giving the mates away. So if you see a big pale shape, it's worth a lot of investigation because there could be quite a few fish near them like these. But these, these seem to be moving quite a lot because they've started out sort of 20 yards out and they moved 10 yards that way. So, but it's a starting point. I've seen nothing up there. Um, we've seen nothing show but there's definitely fish here, so I'm going to get the gear and get around here. down there so this rod's going on the far left hand side this this seems to be a couple of them there and a couple of them about 10 yards past um, so what I'm gonna do I've got a little choddy on here now a long run choddy on a bit of lead core so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna cast quite far past hopefully catch it before the lead or the hook hits the weed wind it back and lower it down onto where the fish are and hopefully that won't spook them but I think I'm literally gonna get one or two casts on this if, if I start making mistakes on these casts or catching up with weed or anything else like that, the chance could be gone. And I, I think this is a very limited chance because I don't know how pressured these fish are. Um, I'm guessing they're not overly pressured, but with this shit out of water, with lead sort of crashing around and lines in the water, they're gonna know I'm here. And if they know I'm here, there's nothing to hold them really. Uh, Cause I'm not putting in a bait into a fishing thing cause I think they're gonna drift off. So I think if we get a bite, it could well be fairly quickly. So let's have a go. Well, I got that completely wrong. There's a fish down here, probably about 20 yards out on the far left. So the idea was to cast about 40 yards out and wind it back on top of it. Cast about 40 yards out, let it the water right amongst about 89 fish and they've all bolted. That could be my chance gone. Um, a bit gutted myself because I didn't see them. The wind line, there's a wind line straight across there and they must have been that wind line. I can't see any sort of ripples or anything kicking up out of that wind line. So angry with myself there but all I can do is leave it in the water and see what happens hopefully they won't have gone too far like I said they might not be too pressured in here Here's the second rod. Luckily, there's still a few fish out there. Not, not where I've cast that one on the far left, but there's still a few fish kicking around on the right. So I haven't completely spooked this one, which is lucky. But I'm trying something different on this rod. I'm one of these anglers that likes to try different things on each rod, or at least if I've got three rods out, one of them's fishing a slightly different rig. So that's on a choddy. This is on a long hinge stiff rig. So it's about 14, 15 inches long. And it's got quite an aggressive curl on that end. Size six hook, and again, I'm, I'm trying a, uh, a cell. I just think cell is just a, one of these baits that instantly works everywhere and most fish have seen it before and most fish have eaten it. So cell is generally my go-to bait. So a little one and a half ounce lead, size six hook, long link. So the idea of that is that'll plug down and if there's a little bit of weed around, this will just sit on the top. If there's no weed around, this will sit down to the bottom. Whereas sometimes with a choddy, if you've got a long choddy on and you're in between weed beds, your rig can be suspended above a, a clear spot underneath. Whereas this is just that little bit, a little bit more subtle and generally when it's low line weed, which I'm hoping what out there, I don't know, but I'm hoping it's out there. Uh, this will just fish just a little bit better and I've, I've got better success on this. Whereas Choddy's better with his quite long fronds of weed. Um, but I can see weed to the surface. So I'm hopefully gonna cast beyond again, wind it back and uh, drop it where I've seen the fish. So uh, let's hope I have more luck this time. <laughs>
them two rods out. They've been out for about half hour, three quarters of an hour now. There's still a few fish around. That, that koi is still kicking around and a few of his mates are still kicking around. I think I spooked everything off that left-hand rod though. I've seen nothing in that area again, so they're spooked. But I, I think this right-hand rod, I think that's live. Um, so I've made up a third rod. What I've got here is a little like one ounce lead again. And then I've got a little stick mix. So the idea is I'll chuck it out and it's, it's very, very weedy up here where I'm going to put it. The lead will slide through the weed. This will sink down. The hook won't catch up in anything. The PVA will dissolve and there'll be a little bit of uh, food items and a tiny little critical bait on top of it. So hopefully that's enough to get this fish and get this fish in weedless. Now, most of the fish is sort of out here in front of me, but I've just seen one venture down there to what looks like an old sort of lily bed down the bottom. So I'm going to just underarm it, walk down there, underarm it just short. I'm hoping I'll feel a drop, but uh, I probably won't at the minute because it's just that shallow and that weedy. But if I can get three rods in the water, that, that ups my chances a little bit. And by walking down the bank and fishing it away from these few fish that are milling out in front of here, it, uh, it gives me an extra chance without really putting too much pressure in front of me. So that's the plan. Hopefully I won't screw it up again, but uh, we'll see what happens. I'll go and flick it out down, down the bank. Well, I thought I was in then. I was just standing on that uh, log behind us, looking out into the swim, and that, that ghosty koi thing's still there. And it wasn't a million miles away from the hook bait either, it was about six foot away. And I'm standing there watching that and trying to spot his mates that are obviously with it, or usually with it. And um, the middle rod just cracked up. I heard the bobbin hit the, the rod butt as well as the alarm go off. Jumped off the log, come running across here, fully expecting to, for everything to be tied up and ripping off. And it wasn't, it's fell back to where it was before. So I've either had a very, very aggressive liner or I've had an aborted take. Either way, I need to redo this rod, um, but I don't want to do it now because I've got this fish around, so I could spook them if I wind this rod in. So I'm going to give it a few minutes, wind this rod in and see if I can get it back out in position again. But the fish are nowhere near as active as what they were previously. And to be honest, if it wasn't for that aborted take and the ghost that I keep seeing, I'd have thought they'd done the off, but um, Obviously that bite's proved, line bite or, or a body take, it's proved it's still fish here, even though they're not on the surface, which saying it's only two or three foot deep, it's, uh, it's hard not to be on the surface, but I'll give it 10 minutes, wind it in, check see if everything's all right, and try and get it back out in position, and uh, hopefully I might get one, but we'll see. Well, I'm into a fish. After that aborted take, I saw the line just flick up in the water and the, the bobbin just moved slightly. I thought that's a bit weird, so I just watched the line a little bit more and just lifted in the water a bit and then dropped back down. And so I picked it up and this thing was just sitting on the end. And I think what happened was that tape was probably a take after all and he, he just sort of moved sideways and straight into a thick weed bed. And he was just sitting there and I think he was just inching backwards and forwards. And that's where the line was flicking. And now I've just got a big old weed bed that I'm hoping has a fish in the centre, so I just need to move this out of the way so I can net it. Thank you, Mr. Cameraman. I think I can see a tail sticking out of that. I hope it's a tail anyway. Got him! Whew. Happy with that. <laughs> Look how dark this little fella is. Cracking looking fish. Nice golden scales, as black as anything. Probably not the biggest fish in the world, just weighed it at 14 and a half pounds. 
but happy for my first time on a on a new water to not only find the fish but catch a fish. I was going to say first cast, but it wasn't. It was the it was the second one I put out. But um, well happy with that. <laughs>